Morning all, it's a crack of dawn here on the farm and we have some guests coming through. I'm going to be on the vlog today. Um, we have some YouTubers that, not your traditional Thailand YouTubers that are here vlogging Thailand, but a young couple called Tyler and Kick. Kick moved over to the USA to live with uh, Tyler over there and they have like a pizza van that they run and they one day stuck it on YouTube and it got super famous and I think Kick's got like 1.2 million followers on Facebook but they're very humble nice people uh, with very similar values to Damo and I like they plan to retire right here in real Thailand they have a place out here in real Thailand so we're going to be talking to them today we're going to be asking them some questions you guys can get to know them a little bit they're interesting characters I think and uh, lots to share with us today hey guys All right, guys, welcome, welcome, welcome. So actually, we were meant to get together three years ago, COVID happened, and now here we are. Welcome to the farm, Tyler and Gig. Yeah, thanks for having us. <laughs> yeah, thanks for having us. And so guys, first uh, first thing I always ask everybody that watches the channel, how does the farm feel? Is it, is it weird to be here? If you've watched the channel before, is it a little bit surreal? People say it's weird, it feels weird. I wouldn't say weird, uh, but when you, Let's say when you read a book like Harry Potter and then you see the movie, right? It's a little different than what your imagination created. So it's it's a little weird in that uh, aspect because I might have thought it was bigger, smaller, or, uh, something like that. Like the, mm -hmm. the map out of it might have been different in my mind. So. And what, you, what about you, Gay? It's just like how I imagined for oh. me. <laughs> I feel like, yeah, I saw, I saw all of this in the video and maybe because I'm from area that kind of looked like this so I project a road and it looks like what I thought and now I'm I really like his place I really like it because it feels really like natural and yeah I love it and so you guys actually live full-time in the States right and what I find interesting about your story is you started YouTube like about a year after me I think and your channel just completely blew up your, your channel is ma mainly Thai people watching but it's gone like super from zero to millions of views over the past few years. Uh, whose idea was it to start the channel and what was the original idea behind it? It was funny because I started it for my friends back home. Everybody told me before I moved to America, you have to have a YouTube channel. You have to start a YouTube channel. So when I started, I vlog myself going to places, you know, and nobody watched me because, of course, I was not known. But I would um, copy the link and then send it to all my friends who told me to start a YouTube channel. And they would be the only one who watched. But at that time, I was already started to do the food truck. But I did not know that that was what people would be interested in. Mm -hmm. But my mom told me, I want to see you work. So can you just put your camera there and then just film the whole thing? And I did. And then I copied the link and sent it to my friends and my mom. And then the next day I looked at it and it, it got 600 views. Yeah, like, yeah. It's, <laughs> Went yeah, from it's 100 that way normally before. to yeah. 600 yeah. and started so, being 1,000. Yeah. We realized that um, working the food truck is what uh, people want to see. So. And this is like making pizza, right? So Gig and Tyler, they have a pizza van. Uh, a pizza truck, I can call it, right? In the States, that's their main job. And that's what you do over there, right? Yeah, that's what we we started that together in America. We started the food truck. He he's a pizza guy, so pizza I'll guy. Let him, I'll let About him 14, 15 yeah. years of pizza experience, and finally was able to open up a food truck thanks to my dad. And she had moved to America right when that was kind of happening, so it just kind of came together. And she didn't know anything about pizza, yeah, uh, especially American style pizza. But uh, I taught her, and she now she can make pizza professionally. She can throw it in the air. She can cook <laughs> using the wood fired oven, kind of. make the dough, everything. She knows. That was that a dream of of yours, or? No, he told me about that before I moved to America. You know, before uh -huh. I move, I asked him, what's the plan? What are we going to do when we get there? He said, like, we're going to open a, a food truck together or, or a restaurant or something like that. But I was imagining uh, me being a, like a server. Mm -hmm. But I did not know that I would actually be making pizza. <laughs> it happened. You guys met in Thailand, right? And, and you've been together now over four years, right? Married almost four years uh, together in total maybe about six years like okay know each other know each other six years been together yeah. five ish yeah. yeah 
And for you, Tyler, when you came over here to Thailand those six years ago, were you actually planning to meet somebody here? Or were you just on some kind of holiday? Or I kind of gave the dating thing up. I, I had been kind of hunting and trying to date for a long time, and it wasn't going the way that I wanted. So I kind of just wanted to be free of that and go travel and just whatever happens, happens type of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I knew I wanted to go to Thailand, so I studied Thai. And I thought I might want to teach in Chiang Mai because the school where I lived has a transfer program specifically with Chiang Mai. I thought, wow, maybe I'll travel and maybe I'll get a job or I'll, I'll like this school and I can, I can transfer over. Uh, so, but I need to learn Thai somehow, which is how I ended up meeting Kik on an app called Speaky. So Speaky is a language exchange. Uh, you pick a language that you want to learn. Uh, and then you give the language that you have to offer. Mm -hmm. Whoever knows that language, whether they're from the country or not, doesn't matter. If they know, let's say, Spanish, and they're from Italy, but they know Spanish, right? Or from Germany, but they know Spanish. They want to learn English, and you exchange that. Okay. They'll match with you. Yep. So she matched with me knowing Thai. I matched with her because I know English. Yep. And then we just started talking, and eventually I told her, like, I'm going to be in Thailand. We should meet up and... I'll pay for you know travels and stuff don't worry about any of that and we can go to a Utia and go hang out and maybe you can help me if I can't translate myself and you got married in the process and then we eventually got married in the process <laughs> yeah, it was like a long process <laughs> it was kind of like an off and on you know he wasn't coming to Thailand to just per like to meet me or I wasn't um, there in Bangkok to meet him it was just kind of doing my own thing having a school going on I was Doing, um, I was working and you would like show up on my lunch break during his trip you know most of the time he goes around and travel but you know when it, uh, it's my lunch break you would you would ride <laughs> back from the other side of the town to Take eat a with bus me back. And, and then leave <laughs> yeah it's kind of like that for a while before we start being cl closer and then your second trip when you came to Thailand that's when we finally get to travel together mm. okay. like an official dating and yeah we, we came to the point where we either had to essentially cut connection or do something drastic like I moved to Thailand and at that time it would have been illegal because I don't have a visa and if I ever get caught I might get kicked out for who knows how long and the other option was she moves to America but the only visa for that that we could think of was yeah. the K-1 so it's kind of a yeah. dating for us but the only way to really test the waters was she had to get married yeah. but it, 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 it worked out so it's, <laughs> we ended up being yeah. A good match, so so it worked out in our case, might not work out for everybody. And just before we continue our little talk with Tyler and Kick, we'd like to mention our partners, Surfshark VPN. We've been using Surfshark VPN now for over two years. It's perfect for you if you want to stay safe online and protect your cyber security. Not only that, Surfshark now offers multiple different features, such as an ad blocker, a pop-up blocker, a data breach alert, and a malware alert. A lot of our subscribers use Surfshark to access different Netflix libraries. All they have to do is click up in the top right hand corner and select a different country. Then you're going to get access to the Netflix library from that country. And so it's perfect if you're bored of your current library, switch it up there and get access to whole new content. On top of this, Surfshark can help you avoid price discrimination. So sometimes when we search from one country, prices can be different to if we search for another country. This applies to things like hotels, car rentals and flights. You can switch up your location with Surfshark and check that you're getting the best price possible for what you're looking for. And they've given me a special gift to give to you. It's an exclusive Surfshark discount and three months free. You can click the link in the description and there's a money back guarantee on that as well enjoy guys and gig you're quite entrepreneurial like you're as a little bit like demo so you're quite entrepreneurial you have a you have your own little side businesses as well was it not hard for you to like just leave everything and go to go to live in the states with some dude that you just met yeah it was really hard uh, at that time i was studying and i was also getting ready to um join you know become the immigration officer at that time because uh, I worked in the immigration office and they trained me to to take an exam and I actually took one exam and it's I passed there's only one more to go and it, it lines up with a visa interview so when I told everybody that I'm gonna choose to go to America 
um, everybody was so disappointed and because she yeah. was about to have like what would be considered a really yeah. good like starting job in the government so so yeah so I can do my own business good future ahead of it after that because first thing I have to have I have to have a good job some money you know so yeah my family was looking forward to that and my friends and everybody but then I just threw everything away and then just go to America yeah so, so there must be a lot of doubt like oh is she just running off with this Farang guy she's this the Farang that she just met and it maybe took time for them to trust Tyler is that right yeah, it took time to trust Tyler because they saw Tyler. They all, they all know about him, and he he's young. You know, he's a traveler. Nobody knows what what he's doing in America, and you know how successful he's already is. Or, so they just they just think like I am like a farm girl, and I'm being tricked into going to America with this guy. <laughs> yeah. And that's kind of one of those old common stories, yeah, like yeah. the the farm girl from the small town gets swindled up by the the Bangkok boy, right? Or even just the Falang traveler, because um, she believes anything that any guy says and then, you know, gets her heart broken. So, of course, the family's like, it's happening, it's happening to our, our yeah. girl, like, we can't <laughs> let it happen. Uh, but this time, it, it wasn't that case, and, yeah. And now you guys split your time between Thailand and the States, right? I talked to in num different people that I've interviewed before and different expats. A lot of the sentiment is, I want to escape the, uh, the States. Like, I want to get out of there. I want to get out of the West. I want to get into Thailand. But talking with you guys over dinner last night, you actually love being in the States and you want the best of both worlds, right? So you live in between. What, what is your living situation now? What's your plans for the future with it too, in, involving Thailand? So uh, this year is the longest that we've stayed in Thailand. Uh, basically split the year and a half, six months here, six months in America. Um, but we don't want to leave America behind. We want to be able to have a home base there that we can travel back to, visit my family, have friends over. And then in the winter time, of course, because Thailand's warm and beautiful and, and Idaho is cold and dark, we want to be able to go over to Thailand and see her family and be able to travel and experience all the food and the culture here. Um, so we want to try our best, if we can financially afford it, to be able to travel back and forth and get the best of both worlds. And is that that's how you feel about it too, Gig? Yeah. Yeah, I feel I feel like I have two homes. I don't feel like oh I have to come back to Thailand. This is where I live. This is my home. But I feel like if I'm in Thailand for long enough, I start missing my home in America. I start missing Idaho. Um, if I'm in Idaho long enough, I start missing Thailand, missing my family, the culture, and everything. Yeah, one of the biggest complaints I hear from Thais that move over to places like England is that the weather's freezing cold, they can't get hold of the food that they want, and they miss that community, the, the Thai community. Would you say that's right for you? It, it was it was difficult at first. It was really difficult at first, but I, I was looking for temples. I was trying my best to look for the community. Once I'm in, I, I think... I thought that if I was part of the Thai community in America, it would actually help me to feel like home again. And I did, went to a temple, and it went so fast because everybody that are Thai know each other. So they introduced me to everyone, and then I quickly um, made my own like com little community. I have friends over every week. So yeah, it was awesome. And now in Thailand, you guys have just, um, you're going to some awards, you get chosen from some awards and things like that. Um, what's what's it like being famous? Oh yeah, it's it's pretty. Um, it's, it's more obvious when I'm in Thailand because when I'm in America, I, I I don't know how famous I am by just walking around because nobody noticed me. But when we're here, people would notice us and take picture with us a lot. So it's kind of like different. We um, the first time we were here after we 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 were known. We didn't know how to act. We, we were really happy. I post about it. I wrote about it. Oh my God, I remember everybody that walked up to me. And now, yeah, I just, I'm just getting used to it. Yeah. Because it, you're challenged many Thai people that watch, right? And you become like a superstar couple with, with the Thais. Well, yeah, we have a lot of uh, Thai fans. Uh, most of our fans are, are Thai. And there are, um, I looked at their age group. They're probably about uh, 25 and up. So about my age and up, mostly 40, 50. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're really loyal. Yeah. Ex yeah, yeah. Die hard, loyal. They're very, very like respectful, which is yeah. shocking. Like when I first started running into fans, I just had this idea in my mind from movies in America that it's going to be 
like bugging you like hey man come on like take a picture with me and these five other people like it's gonna be just a bother but they're very respectful and they can tell like hey he's about to catch his taxi can I take a quick photo thank you let's go yeah. Um, Tyler yeah, often ask fans for photo before they even ask him some of them are too nervous to, to say anything but you t you could tell they want a photo mm -hmm. but they're maybe a little too embarrassing Greng Greng Jai Greng Jai yeah uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, one thing that was quite clear to me last night when we had dinner was we have a lot of like things in common as, as couples here, like being with a Thai and a, and a Farang. But then also, Tadi, you've integrated quite well. Um, you speak the language, you know, to I think like it's a semi-fluent level. Uh, indeed, on Gig's channel, sometimes you're talking in Thai, and I think on your channel you're talking in Thai as well yeah. sometimes. But also, I saw you that you do Muay Thai as well. I so did. is, is it first time. was this this was the first time because you look quite experienced it looks like you've been in the ring a few times but this was you doing Muay Thai and um, what is the inspiration behind that or did Gig just make you do it? Um, <laughs> no, so I I wanted to do it. Kick was quite uh, reserved about it. She didn't know what to think, but she's very supportive of things I want to do. But I definitely I I like to indulge myself in Thai culture. So first was the language. Second was trying to go to work with her dad and, and go do things that Thai people do that foreigners don't get to experience. Kind of, if you've ever seen a show Dirty Jobs with Mike Rowe, he goes and does things that no one's ever done before. Um, and I kind of like to indulge in that way. And I love Muay Thai and I've always kind of been an athlete, at least at a low tier level. So I wanted to go and train. Uh, they have no gyms in Jongwat Bungan. Bungan has no gyms that are at least listed on Google. So I had to travel to Udon. This is Kik's hometown, yeah. right? In, yeah, in Kik's hometown. You have to travel from Bungan to Udon. Yep. And so I traveled there by myself on a motorcycle uh, for the first time. Stayed a couple days and trained. Had to go back. Kick then drove me back in the car, dropped me off. I had no motorcycle, no vehicle by myself for the next, what, eight or nine days. Trained every morning, every night. So it's just maybe a week and a half that I got to train uh, but had you done any martial arts before, any boxing or anything in the States? I've, I'd never trained and done uh, anything like that before. I'd, I'd been semi-active, like, you know, go outside, hit the bag for 30 minutes, go to the gym and, and work out a little bit, but never been sparring, uh, never had an instructor teach me, like, hey, you're kicking wrong, you need to pull your leg up and make sure your elbow's on the outside of your knee. Like, no one ever taught me these little things. I just watched YouTube videos with Buakau and... Senshai saying, oh, when you kick, do that. And I, I try to kind of learn from, you know, what I had available to me. So. But you won, right? I did. I won, yes. Yeah. The f that modest. was so fun, too. He won. <laughs> <laughs> and I heard kick at the sidelines going, knock him out, will you? Yeah. <laughs> oh, she got excited. Gig? Because Gig's so soft-spoken. She's like, yeah, go on, knock him out. Knock him yeah. out. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, my mom, my mom and dad was there, and my mom couldn't even watch it, but... At that time, I, I realized that there's nothing can stop him, you know, I, I just have to be supportive. And when he's up there, I felt like I was the one um, fighting myself. <laughs> yeah. So I I just yelled whatever and I was hoping that you heard me. Yeah. And yeah. Get your adrenaline up. Get is that what she was shouting? Yeah. Get your adrenaline mine up. mine is all the Knock way up right now. It was a good pep talk. It was really good. I could hear her. Yeah. yeah. I could hear her screaming. And when I came back yeah. at the end of the round, I could hear exactly what yeah. she's saying. She's translating <laughs> for the coach, which helped a yeah. lot. So. I watched, I rewatched the video and I, <laughs> it was just so funny. It was embarrassing. <laughs> So a lot of people that watch this channel, they're interested in living in rural Thailand, like whether it's a Thai that lives in Bangkok that one day wants to be in the rural area, whether it's somebody in the US or the UK that wants to, dreams of retiring this way. You guys have got plans for the future to live rural, right? Is that is that your plan? Is this a retirement plan? And is it something you think you'd start quite young or do you think you're going to wait until you're you know old and grey? I don't see myself living in a city, so if we decide to do something like that, it would be in my hometown in Bungan, which is in a like countryside and very similar yeah. to to here. Yeah, like if you came and visited, to... you would it would feel like you're driving around <laughs> your area right now. Yeah, and at first I didn't think that Tyler would be able to do it. Uh, first trip, second trip, he he still missed the city. He still wants to go to Bangkok. He still wants to once in a while go to a restaurant um, that has the Pizza. Like pizza, burgers. <laughs> burgers <laughs> but, and pizza. Yeah, but yeah. this trip, you, you've been doing just fine in, in the countryside and you wake up in the morning and 
walk and talk to people in the area and he seems happy so yeah i think i don't know i think i can retire. you think you could do it right. yeah i could yeah. definitely do it i i enjoy the slow chill life um and we're not that far we're an hour drive away from bungan city so if i really want to like go see a movie or what i don't know whatever whatever you want to do see? in the city it, it is there so yeah so guys if people want to find more about you i guess you kind of have to be tied to watch your channel on gig right it's majority of it is in thai right yeah majority of my videos are in thai but you can also watch tyler's channel because his channel sometimes speak in english i'd say um he tries to do um, both languages and you can look it up too it's tyler and thailand uh, which my channel is called kick in maker which is short for america and when he's in thailand his channel is tyler and thailand um, he would show his lifestyle on his uh, youtube channel when he lives in Bungan, when he stay in my house in Bungan, and yeah, that's really fun. Okay, guys. Well, it's a pleasure having you here. Thanks for coming visit us at the farm, and we know we'll be following your journey. Uh, like I said, I feel like we have a lot in common as a couple. Like we we love this country. We like the rural life. We're not uh, such city people, maybe. <laughs> um, so thanks for coming, guys. Yeah, thank, thank you so you much for having, for having us. us. Yeah. yeah, it's a beautiful home, and we appreciate being invited out here. Yeah. Then when we. We kept wearing them on the vlog, <laughs> and people were like, where do we get some? Where do we get some? So yeah. then we'd like, okay, we'll, we'll put them on the side. These are Yeah, I like cool these too. I, I... You hold them like this, because they go in a pouch when they're joys. So you actually hold them like this, or you put them in your pocket. Yeah. Yeah, and just walk around like, like this. They, th that's what they really like. They like to feel very constricted and safe. Do they run away? Like, have you taken it somewhere and then do they run away or do they stay in your pocket? Uh, this one's still training at the moment. So this is how you train them. You make them go through a hole like this and then you, you train them to stay on your body. There's two of them because they don't like to live alone. They, they like to live, they're very social and they get depressed if they live alone. El Natura. Good seeing you, brother. Good seeing you, man. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for having us out here. Yeah, and next time I'm going to be coming visiting you guys yeah. In, yeah. in the hometown. If you feel like skipping Songkran here or something, you want to go up for a day, <laughs> How far is it from here? Say an hour. Wow, really? Yeah. <laughs> By car, yeah? Sorry. Yeah. Bye. Bye.